So you've just got a refund check from a vendor. Maybe they overcharged you or maybe you returned something. Either way, you're holding this check now thinking, how do I enter this into QuickBooks without breaking anything? Don't worry, you've clicked on the right video. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to record your vendor refund check without throwing off your accounts payable or messing up your reports. Quick thing before we jump in, if you've ever closed out the month and had that little panic moment like, wait, did I forget to do something? I made something for you to save you from moments just like this. It's my free end of month bookkeeping checklist. Super simple, super helpful. It'll save you from those, I think I missed something moments and give you a quick win every month. Just comment checklist down below or grab it from the description. All right, let's get into it. We have a four part process to record this. Now, before you say, wait, why can't I just record this directly from the bank feed or go up here to the plus new button and click on bank deposit and be done with it? Well, if we do it those ways, QuickBooks doesn't tie the refund back to the vendor. So when you go to look at your vendor's history, it's like that refund just never even happened. But if we take the extra couple of steps I'm about to show you, that refund will show up under the vendor, your reports will be accurate and you won't be scratching your head later wondering why isn't QuickBooks showing me all the data so here's how to do it in four steps first of all we need to tell QuickBooks that this vendor gave us a refund so we're gonna enter a vendor credit we're gonna go up here to the plus new button and click vendor credit we're gonna choose the correct vendor the correct date and we can enter the check number here then further down the screen, we're going to enter either the item details or category details that this refund was for. You want to make sure this is the same item or category that you used for the bill when you entered the bill from this vendor. Then we'll enter a description and the refund amount. And if this was billable to a customer, we'll enter that here. Then down at the bottom left, we can enter a memo and we can attach supporting documents if needed. Then at the bottom right, we'll click save and close. Okay, that's step one. Next, we're gonna record the actual deposit of that check into our bank. But we're not just creating a regular deposit. We're gonna make one that actually talks to the accounts payable. So click the plus new button again, and this time choose bank deposit. We're gonna choose the correct bank account where we deposited the check and the deposit date. And then down here in the add funds to this deposit section, we're gonna select the received from field and enter our vendor's name. Now in the account field, here we are not going to enter the category that we would normally put for this vendor. Instead, we're gonna enter accounts payable. Then we can enter a description, a payment method. Let's select check. We can put a reference number here and then our amount. Now, if you're depositing other checks or payments with this deposit, make sure to select those or enter those here as well. And then at the bottom right, we're gonna click save and close. So basically what we're doing here is saying, hey QuickBooks, I deposited this refund and it's related to that open vendor credit that we just created. Now this next part might feel a little bit weird, but it works. Before we do this step, let me show you something real quick. If we go to the vendor balance detail report, so we're gonna click on reports. We're gonna type in the search here, vendor balance. We're gonna click on the vendor balance detail. Now, if we look here, we'll see that our vendor A1 rentals is showing here with the vendor credit as well as the deposit listed here. Obviously the balance is zero, but it's still showing up as open on these reports, which means QuickBooks doesn't know these two things belong together yet. So if we don't do this next step, those transactions are gonna continue showing up on this report. Also, if we go to the AP aging report, so let's go back to reports, and this time let's type accounts payable and click on the aging summary report. And as we can see here, our vendor A1 rentals is still showing here on our accounts payable aging report, even though it has zeros. So if we don't do this next step, this $0 balance is gonna continue staying on this report and will eventually be in the 91 days and over column. So let's connect the dots for QuickBooks with this next step, which is gonna remove this vendor from showing up on these reports since there is no balance due to them. So let's go to the plus new button again and this time click pay bills. Now we're not actually gonna be paying anything here. This step just zeros out the amount because as you can see down here, our vendor A1 rentals has a due today status. And if we let it sit there, it will start saying overdue. And we don't want that to show overdue because it actually isn't. So up here at the top, we're gonna to select the correct account. So let's select the checking account choose the date for the check number since we're not actually writing a check we can just enter something like refund here now we're going to go down here to our correct vendor and check the box to the left of them and in the credit applied column make sure the credit is being applied our 200 is showing here so we're good and we'll see that the actual payment amount up here at the top right is showing zero dollars so let's go down to the bottom right and click save and close now when we go back to that ap aging report and run the report again the $0 balance from A1 Rentals no longer shows up here. And if we go back to the Vendor Balance Detail Report, 
we no longer see A1 rentals with the vendor credit and deposit listed here. QuickBooks now knows these two transactions offset each other and your vendor is no longer listed as having anything open. Now, if we go to our vendor list, so we hover over expenses and click vendors and we find our vendor and click on them here, we'll see our vendor credit, our deposit, and our bill payment. Now for our last step, when that check that we deposited actually shows up in our bank transactions, what do we do with it? So let's go over here to transactions and inside our checking account here, let's find that deposit. And we'll see that QuickBooks is recognizing that this matches to the deposit that we entered just a minute ago. So we'll go over here to the right of the screen and we'll click on match. Now be sure that you match this transaction instead of going over here and categorizing it to the category like you usually would with these transactions. Because if you do that after entering the vendor credit and deposit like we did a minute ago, then that will duplicate that refund in the books and make your books inaccurate. So make sure to hit the match button here. And there we go. Now the books are accurate, your vendor history is clean, and you didn't break anything. And don't forget, if you're not 100% sure you're keeping up with all the monthly bookkeeping to-dos, grab my free end of month bookkeeping checklist. Just comment checklist down below or head to the description to grab your copy. Now, if you received a credit card refund from your vendor instead of a check, you're gonna wanna watch this next video right here. And I'll show you exactly how to record that credit card refund in QuickBooks Online. Mm -hmm.